All right, so here's a quick uh, synopsis, a quick discussion on what we're using on Kenny's drums here. Okay, so 57, top and bottom, no surprises. I'm not breaking any rules here. Um, it's pulled back slightly, so there's a little bit more, a little bit more warmth. If I came back even further here, I get more rim. Kenny, as he was explaining, if you watch his video, is a really, really consistent drummer. So the way he plays, he pretty much gives me the same snare tone every single time. And you know, as he's explaining, he'll adjust his, his technique depending on what we need for the song. So this is pulled out a little bit. It's about here, so we're getting a, a pretty much a sort of even split between the center and the sides. If I want to get more rim, I can come back about two inches back there. But when you've got a drum as good as Kenny, it's balanced. You don't have to do it. But some drummers, they don't play the rim that hard. I will pull back further so I get more rim. Here it is, nice and central. There's, there's also a 57 on the bottom. The 57 on the bottom, you'll see when we talk about inside, is split down the face because, of course, it's hearing the exact opposite of the top mic. Again, we'll check the polarity in there. Okay, on the hi hat, two mics. Pencil condenser, AKG 451. Doesn't have to be a 451. The Technica, Lewitt, everybody makes an inexpensive, you know, $500 pencil condenser like this. And a 57. I stole this from Dave Jordan. This is his trick. He used this on. He uses pretty much every record he's ever made, from making Stones records, when he was doing uh, Remain in Light with uh, Talking Heads, he came up with this idea. I don't like to do a lot of work, so for me it's like the pencil condenser picks up all the top end, it's really crisp, and the 57 gives that 3 to 5k lift, that presence lift. Bust the two together, it sounds like a natural hi-hat. You don't have to EQ, you don't have to do any work, the microphones do the work for you. Okay, Tom's. I don't always do the same thing. In this instance, 421s top and bottom. Sometimes I'll use 414s, sometimes I'll use C12As. But in this instance, 421 top, 421 bottom. Bottom mics, you'll see when, when we go back into the, uh, into the uh, control room, bottom mics, again, polarity flipped, so the phase is coherent. So when you hear, this goes down, as you hit the tom here, it will push air opposite. So the two heads, this head, won't go, this head goes in, the other head goes down. So it's creating waveforms opposite to each other, so you need to flip the polarity so they sound in phase. We'll look at that in the console. So same thing on every on all three toms, 421 top, 421 bottom, top, bottom on the first floor, same thing on the second floor. Last thing um, on, to cover the symbols is two U67s here. Now obviously we're not always blessed to have two incredible tube mics, but in Sunset Sound we are. U67, U67. These are exactly the same distance away from the center of the, of the snare. Now, you might ask why. Obviously, that keeps it in phase and makes sure the polarity is good in the snare. But also, frankly, I use a lot of mics, but I might only use two or three in a mix. So if I take these two overheads and what we've got going on in the kick, that could be the drum sound. And with a drummer like Kenny, who's very even sounding, you can do that. I mean, you literally, when, he was, when we, I was listening to overheads in there, he was going around the kit and the cymbals and the toms and everything was balanced. So I am a strong believer in making my overheads be in phase with my kit because I might just want to use those. Um, some people will just mic cymbals. And I think for heavy rock, that's fine. Put a mic on each one of the cymbals. That's great because all you want to hear is psh, psh, psh. We're not doing this. We're doing very organic music here. We want the drums to sound real. So measure your microphones in phase with the center of the snare. Next is a third mic. It's not a U67. I don't have a third one. It's a U87, an original one. That again is 46 and a half inches away. And that pulls back from the kit and gets a very accurate sound of the kit. All right, last but no means least is our dear friend, the kick drum. Three mics going on here. Inside a D112, it is pulled back about halfway. It's not right up against the, uh, the beta head, it's about halfway back. I usually pull it off axis, so here's my beta, I pull it off there and then I painted it, pointed it. Don't ask me why, I've tried it five different ways, 500 different ways, and that's the way I like to sound off. So I tilt slightly back and then point it at an angle. I don't do it directly. There's something about being slightly off axis that makes it sound less basketball sounding, at least to me. Here is a FET 47. You can use any large diaphragm condenser as far as I'm concerned. And it picks up the ring of the front head. That gives me my bottom air that I love. And lastly, I've got a Coles here. So I've got a ribbon mic. We actually dropped it down because 
Kenny is a really consistent heavy hitter, and we had, and this is a big rock song, big rock songs that we're doing. We had it exactly in front of the sound hole, and believe it or not, this hole here was putting out air, even at this distance, with the way Kenny was playing it, you actually heard the ribbon crapping out. I mean, that's a powerful rock drum, 26 inch kick. So we dropped the coals down, so it's still picking up the sound ahead, still got that lovely ring, but we won't get any air blowing into it. So that's our, that's our kick. Okay, moving swiftly on. So this is original 414. This is just our talkback mic. It's set um, to Omni, so it's picking up everything. So I can hear everybody talking in the room, but just as importantly, it's one of my room mics. So this is a Omni room mic, just generically picking up everything. Sounds fantastic. Okay, I have a pair of microphones here on the floor. There's one here and there's one on the other side and they are exactly measured to the snare drum again. So they're wide, but they make sure that the drum kit sounds wide and in phase. Um, and they are miking the floor because this parquet kind of sounding floor is really great sounding. And above here, I have a pair of mics, again, Neumann's, pointing at the kick. And again, these are measured to the snare. So if you could look over to the other side, over here, you'll see the same pair configuration of mics and they are both measured to be in phase with the snare drum. Because for me, I want to be able to, if I just want a big room drum sound, and I just pull them up in stereo, here's my big room drum sound. It's, it's really easy, and you can hear it. Okay, um, and last but no means least, is a mic pointing at the wall, getting a reflected sound. It's a U67 against the wall, and it sounds phenomenal. It's actually one of the best sounding mics in the room. You can just, you can just, um, you know, solo this and get an amazing drum sound. So it's pointing at the wall, recording the reflective sound of the drums. That's it, so that's the mic set up in here for the drums. Let's go and check out the console. Okay, so we're in the control room here. Um, by the way, we're in Sunset Sound Studio 3. Um, this room has been called, and is actually always gets called, the Prince Room. The reason why they call it the Prince Room is they recorded prints here for a whopping two years. He basically lived in this studio for two years. I believe he had a bed set up in there and he did um, 1999 and um, Old Purple Rain. He did those two albums here. So um, the console that's here is a Sunset Sound design console. It uses API EQs. Um, they're in every channel here. They're the 550As. They're a great, great, uh, EQ, and I'll take you through every single channel. And it has the Sunset Sound mic pre's up here, which I believe they're selling now. Um, and these are the Sunset Sound mic pre's. And these mic pre's um, use Dr Jensen transformers, and they just have a really, really unique um, sound. So anyway, let's go through it. Um, first of all, here I have a talkback set up here, by the way. We'll play a little bit of the uh, talkback here. This talkback mic is um, that uh, 414 that is out in the live room and it's set to Omni. Okay, so there's no EQ on this by the way. Um, and the way I have this set up is I can actually monitor here. I can mute and unmute and we, we sent this pre-EQ so it doesn't matter if I mute or unmute. I can use it to listen either how it's being printed, no fader, doesn't go to tape. Um, just go straight from the, the uh, mic pre straight to Pro Tools. So this was my way of listening to them talking to me. I also printed it because as you can tell, it sounds fantastic. Okay, so moving to the next mic, which is the D112, is the kick mic on Kenny's 26 inch kick. Now the way I have this set up is, this is the two tape volume here. Here is the mic pre up here. I flip the phase, I flip the polarity to get it in phase with the two kick, other kick mics that we're using. Um, it may have been a cable, it may be the mic or something, but the, the polarity was exactly opposite, so something was causing that. Okay, so here's the EQ I'm using on the kick in. A little 7K boost, a little 400 cut, well, a little bit aggressive on 400, and then some 50 hertz boost there. And that'll give me, well, you can hear the kick in. So you can hear the uh, the bottom end boost, the low mid cut, and the top boost there. 
makes it a little bit more aggressive. It's got the most modern rock sounding of all the, the mics. Okay, so here's our here's our 47 on the out. It's the FET 47, which is a traditional outside kick mic. I'm doing quite a lot of 50 hertz boost here. I'm doing not as much 400 cut, and I'm actually boosting at 5K on this. So let's have a listen to that. So that's the most natural sounding mic, I think. You know, um, it's of just the kick. The Coles here, which is a ribbon mic, um, is got a pretty good natural sound of the kick, but also being pulled back, even with the um, even with the um, blankets over it, it's getting a little bleed you can hear from the other mics. Again, 50 hertz boost, 400 cut, little 7K boost, let's have a listen to that. Cool, now the snare top, I'm not doing any EQ to the snare top on the console. What I am doing is EQ over here, so follow me over here. So I'm using a Poltec here, um, I'm doing a boost at 100. Um, as you know, Kenny was using his own branded um, snare. If you watch the Kenny's video, you'll see what snares we were using. So I'm doing quite a lot of boost here. The attenuation is completely off. You can pull it up to kind of focus it a little bit more, but I've got it off. So I'm doing, you know, a good two or three dBs. This, this isn't dBs, this is just a, a scale. This is probably about two to three dBs worth of boost at 100 hertz. Then I'm also doing a boost to 10K. And that's just kind of brightening the top of the snare as well. Kenny plays very hard, very aggressively, very evenly. So this just gives me some real snappy bite there. So you can have a listen to that snare top now. Cool, now on the snare bottom here, if you notice at the top here on the mic pre, I flip the polarity there so that uh, this is the snare top, this is the snare bottom, because the mic is pointing up and this one's pointing down. Top is pointing down, bottom is pointing up. I flip the polarity so that the phase is correct. Now EQ wise, I got a little bit more aggressive on this, on this bottom mic. Sometimes on a bottom mic, I know people use condensers. I like those, but they tend to pick up a bit too much kick drum for me. So I'm using a 57. I've got a lot of boost there on 100 hertz. You can see there's quite a lot going on. Nothing in the mid range, but the top on 7K, um, a pretty he hefty boost there. So that makes the bottom snare pretty snappy. So have a listen to that. Great, now next along, and we're not, we're not in any specific order here, is the floor one and floor two. Now with Kenny, um, his, um, his toms are really well tuned. If you watch his video, you can see him playing quite consistently. Um, and you're, you're here, you know, you're, you're here just how well tuned they are. It's, it's always like, dong, 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 like three blind mice. And quite often I'll pull out all the low mids, I'll pull out 400, I'll boost 100, maybe I'll boost a bit of 50, and I might put some like seven or 10 in there to try and get some of the stick brightness. I might do all that, but you know what? The way he had his toms tuned sounded fantastic. So the, both the floor one, the floor two, and the rack, which is further down there, I didn't do any EQ at all. And that's basically to, because Kenny has his toms tuned really well and he plays them really well. If you go up the top here, you'll hear, you'll see that the, uh, the top on over here and the bottom, the polarities flipped on the bottom of both floor one and floor two. If we go to the rack, you'll see the same thing at the top, the polarities flipped. So the phase is correct on the bottom mic again, and there's no EQ at all. So let's have a listen to the toms all together. Cool, now let's go to our little, our old friend, the Mono 67. Now this Mono 67 is the mic that's pointing against the wall. If you remember the mic that's pointing against the wall. No EQ, the sound of this mic is just the 67 against the wall and Kenny's performance. So let's have a listen.
That is a great sounding mic. It's, it's a good mic in a good room with an amazing drummer playing very evenly. So you can hear the 67. Okay, next over here is our hi-hat. These are the two hi-hat mics that are typed to get, taped together. This is a 57, this is the 451, the AKG 451. You don't have to use a 451, you could use, you know, as you know, I like the Lewitt pencil condensers, you could use that, you could use an Audio Technica. It's just a good, medium quality um, pencil condenser would work in that situation. And I tape it to the 57. All I'm doing there is cutting some lows. I'm not going crazy. See, we just set to um, 50 and just cut. That is it. Not using a high pass filter or anything like that, just a bit of cut. That's all I need to do is just pull out some kick drum maybe. Otherwise, it sounds really, really good. Let's have a listen to the hat. That's a good natural sound of the two combined together. All right, next on the agenda are our three overhead mics. This is from my perspective. I always mix and record from my perspective. Some mixes, a couple of mixes I know have drummer's perspective, but I've always imagined I'm watching a band. But it is strange because piano-wise, I always do pian piano player's perspective because I think that's we're always looking at the piano straight on. So I always do the low hand on the piano on the left and the high on the right when I'm, you know, recording, uh, when I'm mixing. But for but from, uh, I always do audience perspective on drums. So this is the left hand mic as you look out onto the drum kit. Okay, so no EQ engaged. Um, as you remember, they're, they're measured 46 and a half inches, all three of these mics from the center of the snare. So if we pull all these three up, you will hear the drums, you will hear the drums in phase of each other, polarity is good, and you'll get a very natural sound of the drums. Let's have a listen to those three together. Now with our room mics, you've obviously heard the Mono 67. With our room mics, we've got two sets. We've got the high room mics and the low mic room mics. And these, you know, can be relatively uneven. I actually found that the output of the mics a little bit, you know, left and right, left heavy, sorry, right heavy, so I brought the rights down a little bit. Again, no EQs. I'm gonna do that and mix. I'm mixing on an SSL. I'll pull out some 350, I'll boost some lows, I'll do all the normal stuff, but I'm gonna do that at mix. I'm not gonna to get too creative here. What I've come here to get is to get the sound of those amazing sounding mic pre's and these great mics and of course, an amazing drummer in an amazing room. That's why I'm here. I can do all the finite detail stuff when I come to mix. So if we listen to the highs and the lows, we can listen to the highs on their own. They tend to be a little uneven from the kick, so what I'll do sometimes is pull them in like 80, 80, you know, 70, 80 degrees in, just to kind of balance them out a little bit, but you will get an accurate feel of how Kenny sounds in the room. So this is the highs on their own. Now, obviously those highs tend to favor the cymbals a little bit because the mics are pointing down at the drum kit, so they are gonna see a little bit more of the cymbals. So to compensate, that's where I have my lows. And my lows are pointing at the floor. Again, no EQ, no compression, just the sound. I usually bring them in about 70, 80 degrees again. Um, so they just feel a bit more natural. And I, personally, sometimes the low, the low mics, sometimes they're like the majority of my drum sound is those low mics. In this room, I love them. And then I might put a bit of kick, a bit of snare in there. Sometimes a little overheads, sometimes not, but very simple. I can I can get a great drum sound with just those two mics and maybe a couple of other thrown in. This is a great room. So let's have a listen to those lows. That's the sound of the whole drums. You can listen to the whole kit, you know, listen to the whole kit together now. This is just off the console. So that's a pretty even sound. I would say that obviously I can get a lot more detailed in mix. It's probably a little roomier than I might have it. Um, I've also printed a chamber and a plate from Sunset Sound. They have a plate here. I set the plate to about a second and a half. And the chamber is a fixed chamber in Sunset Sound that they have in all the rooms that just sounds phenomenal. 
and is the sound one of the other thing reasons why I love working at Sunset Sound. Amazing sounding room. So as ever, please subscribe. Go to producelikeapro.com and sign up for the email list and you'll get even more stuff. There's actually another Vimeo behind the scenes recording of, of Sunset Sound from a couple of months ago you can watch. But this one's with Kenny and we got to do a lot of the stuff. Obviously, if you haven't already watched the Kenny video of him here, you'll love it. It's really, really good. He plays. He plays the drums that we're using here to play back. So check it out. Um, please ask some questions. You know, we're going to do another video with Kenny in a few weeks where we're going to go to his studio and see his setup and see how he records there as well. So tune in for that. And thank you ever so much for watching.